glad to spend a little bit of time with you and uh, show you how to dominate listings in your market. Uh, give you a little bit of background on me. First of all, I am not a um, uh, long talker. I'm a really a bottom line kind of gal. I got into real estate as my first uh, foray into business. I, I found myself as a single parent when I was 20s and I said, oh my goodness, I, I need a way to raise these three children that doesn't put us all in the poorhouse. And so real estate was actually my first business. It was my first choice. And I've been in real estate now for almost 30 years. And I want to tell you something that's been very good to me. But real estate's something, if you put a lot into it, you're going to get a lot out of it. And I'm going to show you some of the things that I've put in to it to become the number one seller of pre-owned homes in my marketplace. And, and if you've ever had a top producer as a friend, I think they'll tell you that it's harder to uh, stay number one than it is to get to number one. And we've been in this position in, the, in our area for over 10 years. So we're working hard. This shows you a little bit of the, uh, just the, you know, some of the memorabilia of, you know, I'm somebody great. Okay, I don't believe that too much, but I will tell you this. I love real estate and I love what it can do for you. And I love ambitious agents who want to make the most out of their career. And I can tell you one thing for sure. If you want an income that's not like a roller coaster, dominating listings will bring you to that position. So I hope you're here for me to uh, tell you that and share with you. To dominate listings in your market, uh, you cannot sound like or respond like or be like every other agent in the marketplace. Okay, well, you knew that. You knew you had to be different. But it goes so much deeper than that. You've got to outthink this industry that is changing by leaps and bounds so quickly. There's so many uh, upstarts out there. Let's, let's talk about Amazon. Let's talk about Purple Bricks. Let's talk about all the people that want your commission. That's what they're in business to do, to get some of your commission. So you really can't just think the way every other agent is thinking. You've got to craft something that's, that's different uh, and stick to it. You know, you got to have, in, you got to be an innovative personality. Uh, you got to be creative, but yet you've got to be organized. And that's what I love about Coming Soon Homes, but it, it will allow you to use your creativity and your innovation, but it'll also allow you to be very organized so that you consistently do the same things for your listings. So let's talk about your competition. Let me tell you something. You'll never be the top listing agents by just being likable. Being likable is important. Everybody wants to do business with somebody that's likable. But, you know, I went on a listing recently, and, and I do still go on listing appointments just to keep my, my uh, uh, edge when it comes to talking to sellers, because if you don't talk to them for a while, you forget how difficult some of them can be. And uh, I was talking to a particular engineer, I'm sure all of you uh, got a listing from engineer and they got, you know, a list of questions that's a mile long, but uh, he was, I think, who knows how many people, but I know he at least had three, maybe more uh, on his presentation. And so he interviewed all these agents and, and I don't know, I interviewed with him maybe on Wednesday. He was going to finish up uh, maybe on Friday. And I didn't hear from him Friday. So Friday night, I woke up in the middle of the night and I said he hadn't called. Why hasn't he called? So I woke up Saturday morning and I got on that phone and I said, you haven't called. You know, I've been waiting by the phone. Tell me what's happening. He said, well, Marty, I, you know, everybody was just so good. I just don't think I could make a, a wrong decision. And what he was really saying to me was, gosh, all you real estate agents are likable. And he had forgotten uh, the things that made us different. And so I brought back in Coming Soon Homes and many other things that we do that I'll share with you to make my closing argument. And by five o'clock that day, I had the listings. But uh, that's, uh, well, that's what it is. So average agents, uh, they know what most agents will do. They drop the listing in MLS. They do a, maybe they do a Facebook ad, you know, those boring Facebook ads, you know, this is the house I just listed. And, you know, nothing's really very creative in their minds. So that um, the story about being the last agent, I know any listing agent worth their salt is going to ask a client seller before they go out to meet with them, hey, you know, what's the process? Are you interviewing agents? 
Uh, if you find out that they're interviewing agents, you've got one position. You can be the first agent or the last agent. And I've heard pros and cons for every single one, but when you're dealing with an engineer, believe me, the last agent is the best position to be in. So just take that as a little, uh, little uh, coaching on what to do. But I wanna tell you to be the dominant listing agent in your market, you've got to develop a track record that can't be beat. I mean, basically you're playing a game of chess with every other agent in the market. You've got to position yourself well. And some of the things that we've done that helps us a lot uh, in our market is we sell more homes than anybody else in our market when it comes to previously enjoyed homes, which is the new name for resales. Uh, and I wanted to add activity brings activity. So when I get to a seller that says, oh gosh, you're so busy. And I have to tell them, look, if you've listed your house with somebody who is not busy, the phone's not ringing, they're not talking to buyers. They really can't bring anything to this equation of helping you sell your home fastest and helping it sell for the highest amount. So business begets more business. And that's the way this uh, business works. And also, if you want some done, you better give it to a busy person because that's a person that's got the aptitude and the attitude to move on. In our market, I can tell you right now, and I think it's the same with many markets across the U.S., that list price and sale price uh, versus are pretty tight. But if you can develop a unique selling proposition that you get a higher list price versus sale price um, for your listings, then that's something that your competition can't copy. These are the things that I call unique selling propositions that coming soon homes will actually help you attain in your marketplace. So you'll also, we, we're also known for bringing multiple offers to our sellers. And you can say, Marty, you know, everything's getting multiple offers. Well, I beg to differ. I mean, just think about this thing logically. If you're a seller, you don't know anything about real estate. We put your house in the, in the uh, MLS this weekend. Let's say we get lucky. Let's say we sell it this weekend. We've got it sold by Monday. Here's the question I've got for you. How many buyers that would have bought your house have we not contacted? And I'm gonna say it's anywhere between 50 to 80%. So to really do the highest fiduciary duty for your seller, you've got to expose your house. You've got to build up the excitement for that listing. And of course, that's what Coming Soon Homes does. We are able to produce multiple offers over 30% of the time for our sellers. And that gives us another unique selling proposition in this marketplace. So developing a market plan for each home that differs from your competition has to do with coming soon homes because every, anybody can put up a sold sign, anybody can put up a coming soon sign, but when you have a way to get to your customers, to get to your buyer base and say, these are this is where we stage our homes, this is where we put our homes while we're preparing them for market. So sometimes you'll see a home weeks before it goes on the market, sometimes even months before it goes on the market. Market. So developing a marketing plan, by the way, part of that developing a market plan in my market, higher end listings uh, last a lot longer. So we keep them a lot longer on coming soon homes to build up as much momentum before we hit the market as we possibly can. So if you're the only agent in your market to have a coming soon website, you have given your sellers an incredible advantage when it comes to their negotiating power. Because what ComingSoonHomes.com is basically it pushes all of the all of the energy into the listing during the first month, during sometimes the first week. And that's when your seller has the most power in negotiating. If you don't believe me, think about this. You've had a listing before that was on the market for, I don't know, let's say four months, let's say five months. When you got a call from the buyer's agent, that was a certain type of call that said, oh gosh, your house hadn't sold yet. You know, we, we may have some interest, but not at this price. Or if you're able to talk to that same agent the first couple of days that you're on the market and you're able to say, gosh, we've had so much interest in this. And even you can send them something, maybe we'll have this in this presentation, where you send them a little iPad thing that shows you how many buyers have looked at this home on coming soon homes. That gives you something. You're the only agent in your market that can produce that for your home seller. And that's a powerful edge. So I want to tell you about being the buyers, having an edge with the buyers. 
Have you ever noticed that when agents talk to buyers, when a, when a lead call comes in, they all say basically the same thing and it all sounds the same way. Uh, so it really is tough to put into words what you have to do to really connect. I think it's hard for agents sometimes to realize it's showtime. Whenever the phone rings, I don't care who's on the other end. They may not sound like you. You may not think they can produce, but you can't take any of that for granted because it's showtime. And it's your job to build up anticipation. I put on this uh, next slide, when you're dealing with buyers, anticipation is absolutely intoxicating. And actually, I think this is the phrase that I got recently. It was on a box when I went into um, Starbucks and it was one of their little stickers there. And it says anticipation is tox intoxicating. And I thought, oh, you know, Starbucks is all about anticipation. And we should be all about anticipation when we're talking to buyers because we've got to have that excitement and that enthusiasm to do it. Because buyers are just humans like you and me. And, you know, everybody loves what is new. Uh, what's not here yet is always better uh, than what's on the market right now. So if you have a chance to tell a buyer, you know, what you're describing me sounds like a home that we may be putting on the market in the next three to four months. What I'll do is allow you to allow me to send you a link to our coming soon website so that you can find out about this home. And as we're developing this home, as we're putting this home on the market, you'll learn more and more about it. You'll be the first buyer to drive by it. And if you've got interest in it, you can be the first buyer inside to look at the house. So everybody loves what's new. They love the new kid on the block. They love a new song. Uh, sometimes they love a new wife. And we understand the struggle to keep it fresh, to keep it exciting, uh, to keep it moving on. Movies have used the coming soon presentation for years and years. If you've ever walked down to see a great film that you're excited about seeing, as you walk down to go into the auditorium to see the film, you pass by about seven or eight coming soon. Uh, signs about movies that were coming on the market. And you know what? Those movies look better than the one you're going to see because it's all about anticipation. So what's next is always better. And that's what Coming Soon does. Starbucks has used this, as I mentioned. Apple has used it forever. Uh, Apple will tell you, you know this new iPhone? It, it is so much better than the one you've got now. It, the pictures are revolutionary. It's going to do so many more things. You cannot live without it. But by the way, it's going to be eight months before you can actually buy one. So their whole marketing is based on coming soon. And we need to catch a little bit of that coming soon for our real estate market. So when you're promoting your own coming soon site, uh, this is a giant hook. And you've got to have a hook. Oh, no. Um, here's some papers, Russell. I don't know how many of you have talked to buyers on a consistent basis. I do it just to keep fresh. But uh, one of the questions I almost never ask that some of my competitors do is, are you working with an agent? You know, are you working with an agent? Uh, it's kind of like going in, have you ever gone uh, to a dress store or you guys, I guess you go by suit. I don't know, but we go by dresses a lot more. You go by suits. So when you go in the store to look at clothes, the, the little gal that's in there, she comes up to you. and She says, may I help you? And what do you say? You say, oh, no, I'm just looking. And that's kind of the attitude that buyers have. So you have to find a way to hook those buyers. And Coming Soon Homes is a way to hook those buyers, to interest those buyers, because nobody else has got that to offer the buyers. When you can offer that buyer a view, an information porthole that will give them access to homes that are not on the market right now, that are not found on any other website, but that they can get first crack at looking at, deciding before the house goes on the market, if it's a house of interest to them, then they can be their first thing. So. I wanted to give you a little voicemail that we uh, leave sometimes uh, with our uh, buyers that visit our websites because you can use your Coming Soon Home website in an email to people who come to your other websites. Some of you may have Boomtown, you may have your own um, May Smith.
uh, realtor.com, any website that you have that's attracting buyers, if you can get back to that buyer and give them a hook that makes them want to do business with you or at least in, in, inquire with you about something that you have, it's awesome. So we do that uh, when we're, we're giving buyers that have visited our website, we get back to them and say, hey, thank you so much for visiting our website. Uh, we'd love to help you find a, find a home. And by the way, we have all we have a, a website that is special because it basically shows you homes that we're preparing for market that are not on the market right now. They're not on any other website. And I'd love to send you a link to those homes that we're preparing for market. If you'll email me or if you'll text me or if you'll call me at this number and you'd be surprised how much more information uh, you're going to get, how much more communication you're going to get from buyers that are number one, calling you number two, the buyers that are coming to your website. If you can offer them something that the other 10 agents that they've also gone to their websites are not offering to them. This is an awesome way to do business. Another thing about our Coming Soon Homes website is we share our website with other agents. We have many agents in our, our market who are members of our website. And I tell my sellers this, I said, look, if you, part of being a great agent is to win the hearts and minds of other agents in your market. Yeah, I know. We've been told we always cut throat and be real competitive, but truly the real, the real essence of real estate is that you're an ambassador for this whole industry and you got to make real estate look good. And you never make real estate look good by putting down your competition. You always lift them up. You know, that's a great agent. We've shared many deals together. And if you're not going to list your home with me, list your home with that agent. And I've approached that many times. But we share our coming soon website with other agents in the marketplace. And what that does for us is that makes our, our friend agent, our competitor, look good in front of their buyers. My job is to get my seller's home sold for the highest price and to get as many buyers as was possibly give us an offer to that listing in the first, uh, let's say the first month that that house is on the market because that's when my seller has a better negotiating advantage. So naturally, we share our coming soon listings with our competitors. However, we do not show our coming soon listings uh, in our own office. We don't show it in our own team. In other words, our agents are competing at the same time another agent from another office is because when you open the doors to every to one person, you have to open the doors to all people. And that's really the way you give the highest and best service to a seller. So I just quickly, because I love this business so much and I love listing so much, I want to show you a couple of things that we do on listing presentations that I train my agents to do every time. And I got the first point from actually my husband, who was a software engineer. And uh, he used to tell me a long time ago, he said, I never said, never go into a meeting where you don't know what the agenda is. And I find it so interesting that agents will often go into a listing presentation without knowing too much of anything about the seller's motivation, about anything else. So try to find as much, do as much as you can to find out about their needs as possible. Another clue, hint, uh, to really being a great listing agent is to try to connect on something else uh, with the seller other than real estate. I know I used to never do this. I am a bottom line gal. I am a high D. I used to be a high I, but when I started running a team and having to send kids to college and, and uh, do that kind of thing, I became a D, a very driven person. And I don't like a lot of chit chat, but with listings, you've got to take time to connect. You can't just be hard driving. They got to like you to do business with you. So know what you're walking into, know if there's something there that you can connect on a deeper level with that seller. And you gotta know what your seller's fears are about putting their house on the market. And you know, my favorite line, and I'll let you use it for free, is has a realtor wronged you in another life? And you know, I've almost never asked that question that I didn't get, yeah, this one did that wrong. And they gave me a, a list of what that other realtor did wrong. And believe me, that's a clue 
on my presentation and my relationship with this seller on what I better never do wrong during our relationship. So find out what their fears are. Uh, and then pre-sell yourself. We pre-sell ourselves, and of course, having a coming soon site and being able to deliver a, a, a pre-video uh, that tells them a little bit about your coming soon site is often awesome. Uh, we've got one of those um, uh, that uh, Deborah can send to you. It pre-sells the site. It tells them a little bit about it, and none of your competition is going to be sending them anything like that. So before you, we actually even send them a little brownie presentation that says uh, whether we do business with you or not. Uh, you know, we look forward to the opportunity. So that's also. I just put this next slide in because I work with agents now, and I train them to list, and. Um, one of the things that I've noticed is there's a lot of difference between listing agents and actually there's a lot of difference between male listing agents and female listing agents. And um, one of the differences, male listing agents, of course, seem to be a little bit more dominant, but I'd say they're not quite as good of listeners. And I believe that listing and actually all sales is a listening skill. And I believe the ability to listen intently to someone and focus by having a canned presentation and knowing what you're going to say during that presentation is huge. So, you know, I've read somewhere that even a fool looks smart when he keeps his mouth shut. So silence sometimes is golden and it has to be silenced coupled with intense listening, listening to that uh, buyer, I'll tell you a quick story. I took my husband to a uh, marriage counseling seminar years ago, and heaven knows he needed it because uh, I certainly was doing everything right. Joke, joke. But anyway, there's a, a husband and wife uh, speakers that got up there to talk, and uh, she talked for a while, then, then the husband would talk to, for a while. And when the husband talked, the wife turned her head around and looked at this man like he hung the moon. And you know, I have, uh, my husband didn't get too much out of that sem seminar, but I asked him, I said, well, what did you think about that? He said, I just love the way that wife listened to that husband. That gave me a big clue that most of the people that you go out to list their homes haven't been given the reward of somebody truly listening to them in a very long time. So you might wanna try that as one of the greatest ways I can tell you about listing a lot of homes and becoming a great listing agent. And I will tell you another thing about listing agents' personality. Great listing agents hate to lose more than they love to win. And that's what happened to me last Saturday morning or last Friday night when I woke up at three or four and said, you know, I haven't heard from that guy. What is going on? I gotta go in and save that day. And what Coming Soon Homes allowed me to do was recapture my closing argument, which he had forgotten about because he'd gone through three or four other presentations by then. But by recapturing that closing argument, I was able to give him something that was totally different than what um, he was represented, what the other agents represented. As a matter of fact, the first thing he said to me was, um, you know, I just don't think I can make a wrong decision. Everybody's so wonderful. And I said, well, you know, I said, that sounds like to me that you think that everybody's service is the same. So I began to, to go back over and I actually sent him uh, a written presentation. Remember, he was uh, an engineer. So that's, that's how it is. So answer the question in any listing presentation is how are you different? You know, how are you different? Coming Soon Homes is something that you can capture for your market that nobody else in your market will be able to have. Is that They can have a Coming Soon sign, they can have everything, but they cannot have a Coming Soon website that is shared with 33 markets, Hawaii and Canada. They can't have a Coming Soon website that's already established in, in t other top teams and top agents around the United States growing every single week in this industry, they can't have that. You can have that for your market. So coming soon homes will also help you um, dominate uh, days on the market. You know, in my, in my market right now, 
um, days on the market is actually really, really important. Sometimes I think it's more important than list uh, than than the list price. I think days on the market is crucial. Um, so if you want to get a higher list price, you got to make it a hot property. So we have a whole marketing strategy that's built around synergy of the listing. And sometimes, honestly, this time of year, we're getting calls from people who had their houses listed with other people. Imagine that. And they're saying, gosh, my house didn't sell. What can I do? What can you do for me? So we have uh, a, a reinventing your home. We have to reinvent this home. We have to go to the reasons uh, that it didn't sell. And part of that will include our presentation, which is drastically different than what they went through before. Uh, one of the things that we'll be doing on this listing that I told you about is we'll be doing a, a face live, uh, a live Facebook invite to our first open house uh, for this listing. And we'll say something like, you know, this is an exquisite home. And what makes it totally different in our area is it backs up to Falls Lake, which is a, a big a lake in our area. And that's that's very unique in our market. We have no water in this area. So that, that's a big deal. So when we do our Facebook Live presentation and then we put it on our Coming Soon site, on our Facebook Live invitation, we're going to invite people to go to our Coming Soon site and see this home as we drip information to the marketplace. And one of the unique things Deborah will tell you about this site is when you when you add things, uh, something new about your coming soon listing. For example, in our market, of course, we start out with pictures of the outside, and then we do a staging consultation, and then we do pictures of the inside. We do a floor plan. So when we put the floor plan up there, and somebody has already been to the site to look at this house and what it's going to be priced at, they get dinged and they get an invitation to come back and look at this new information. So that is really, really important. It's also very important uh, to build the clientele, build the action as you go on the market. So there's a lot of things I could have told you, but I told you I was a fast talking gal. And um, I just want to let you know that it is possible to dominate listings in your market. It has to be your focus. It has to be something you're passionate about. Uh, we've done it. We can show you the way to do it. We'll also, with our Coming Soon home site, we give you a, a once a month way to capture other uh, buyers in the market that you can use for your Facebook advertisement. We give you a way to capture sellers in the market that you can use for Facebook advertisement. And you get to use some of our marketing skills, which is that beautiful Deborah right down there. Hopefully she's on the screen. Uh, she has great marketing skills. She comes up with great ways to capture the public public's attention. So I hope I've given you a little bit of insight. If you've got any questions, let me know. So just a couple things, Marty, before we go ahead and let everybody go. I know this was a short and sweet session. Marty is straight and to the point. Um, we actually had a quick conversation before we hopped on, and she was interested in allowing you guys to participate in her perfect pitch. So basically, in the next couple weeks, if you're interested, we can get you an exclusive seat so you can sit down and listen and actually see how Marty presents her exclusive listing presentation from start to finish, exactly like if you guys were the seller. So it could be a really interesting take so you can really see the inside value that she presents to those sellers and why she is literally the one that is the, the agent to beat in her Raleigh market here in Carolina. So just stay tuned for a few weeks for us. You'll get an email from us if you're interested. If you want to go ahead and lock in that seat early so we can make sure that you have a seat to participate in that presentation, go ahead and give me a quick call at 919 Two three two nine two three nine. I'll make sure you are first on that list so you can be involved in listening into that presentation. And then the only other part of this is that we want to do a quick little opening Q and A session. So does anybody have any particular questions or comments that they want to, uh, you know, make Marty aware of? It, whether you're on Facebook Live or on uh, the webinar chat here, just go ahead and type in your question, um, or turn on your camera and audio and go ahead and hit us with what you got. Let me check our Facebook feed as well. So Marty, with coming soon listings, here, here's a, a good question for you. Um, what kind of legalities have you had to battle with the MLSs? Oh, 
oh, oh, and they, they invited me to come out of people. Bottom line is uh, they made Coming Soon a part of our MLS, but, but you have to understand, Coming Soon Homes has dealt with MLSs across the United States. And when you try to get control from a big monopoly, ah, there's a, there's usually, there may be a problem. Some of them, they just go right through because you know there's a coming soon sign in almost every realtor store in this nation. So to answer the question, sometimes you're going to go through quick. Sometimes you're going to have a little bumps and, and they'll do that. Here's the good news. We recently went up against a board in another market and that challenged us uh, on this. We, uh, the agent loved her, her site so much, she hired a lawyer and the whole rules changed. So in my market here locally, we follow all rules of our MLS. We absolutely have every single paper signed. We have an executed listing before we start handling that listing. We have a fully executed agreement that has everything clearly documented that our local MLS board requires. Perfect. And Another I just question. To do the <laughs> Another question too, Marty, is uh, where does coming soon work? Does it work in a small market, you know, that might not be as big as a metro area like Raleigh? Does it work in a big market, a vacation style market? How does coming soon work and where is it most effective? You know, I'm so glad you asked me that because I, I, I wanted to say that, you know, I've done a coming soon presentation since 2007. That's 10 years. I did a coming soon presentation to become the number one listing agent in my market. Coming soon website itself is, is probably about four years old. So the point is, is I've worked this in a down market, I've worked this in a buyer's market, and I've worked this in a roaring seller's market. I've worked it in a roaring buyer's market. The beauty of this is that it works in any market. I don't care what kind of market you're in, what's coming on the market next is better than what's on the market. The whole thing, you know, years ago, what they used to tell you, they used to tell you, uh, sell the sizzle, not the steak. Now, I know that's an old saying. But, you know, we have lost some of that because we're all just marching in lockstep with our local board to get that house in MLS and do it exactly the way everybody else does it. And that's not the way you become a dominating listing agent. Perfect. And then what's your take on allowing showings while the listing is in coming soon status? Right. I, don't, I don't do that. I don't do that. That's that's called a pocket listing. A pocket listing benefits the agent. It doesn't benefit the buyer. That's a short termer. I told you real estate was my primary uh, target when I first got in business. I, I'm not a person that jumped from two other. You know, this is not my third stop. Uh, this is my first love. And you do not get the best for your seller if you're only keeping this listing within your team. And, and believe me, lots of agents will do that. Uh, but I don't agree with it. I don't. I think it's a short-sighted way to do business. I think if you just are straight up front and you're working as hard as you can to get that seller the best deal, let the chips fall where they may. You're going to win some, you're going to lose some. But one thing for sure is you're going to have more buyers coming to you because they've lost three other listings uh, dealing with some other agent. Well, and we all know that you are the, the listing queen. You know how to get listings, how to keep them, how to refresh them if they've been sitting on the market. I mean, you know, sellers in this area, especially, they know to come to Marty Hampton specifically because of the processes and programs that you've implemented. So if you could tell these agents just one major key tip that if you could leave them today with how to get more listings, how to increase their business, what would you leave them with? Well, let me, I, I mentioned that this time of the year, um, people are calling you that expired with another agent and uh, one of the things that happens when somebody calls you uh, they'll say they're going to expire this thursday and you want to list the house this friday in my market i would refresh the days on the market but that would cost me most of the fall market so i have to strategically plan that and see we understand our market we keep records to know when our high points are when our high showings are and when our high sellings are so um, uh, I'm losing track here of, of what I wanted to tell you, but the, the biggest thing 
is when you get a listing, you've got to get it out there to the, put it in the hands of people that actually want to show that listing. And to get more listings, you gotta you gotta build on every single success. You know, the, the most elementary thing that you can do in real estate is sell a house and tell the world you sold the house. And when you learn how to do that one thing very efficiently, you'll gather more steam and then you can get more listings. But you, you've got to build on having a strategy that your competition does doesn't have and you can't deviate from that strategy when it when it you know when you lose a listing, for example. You can't deviate, you've got to believe in that strategy so much. And of course, I've worked coming soon so much that I've seen it work. When, when, it, when things weren't working any other way, I've seen this. I've seen us list a home that was listed with the neighborhood agent for, let's say over six months, let's say eight months. I've seen us refresh that listing sell that listing without reducing the price in the first 30 days, simply because we refreshed it. We put it uh, as a new listing on the market and we did a coming soon presentation and really drummed it out there. Another thing I'll leave you with, and when you get so confident that you can say to a seller, because the seller is going to, you know, you know what happens when a listing is going to uh, end up, you, you're going to list so-and-so's house this weekend and they say, you know what? They had a buyer that showed this house and there's some interest. Now, that listing's been sitting on the market for eight months with no offers, but magically, the last day they've got it listed, they have a buyer. And my listing, my agent, my current agent says, this buyer may be the one. You know what you need to sell, tell that seller? You said, if that buyer really is the one, when my sign goes up, they will run to make an offer. You understand? Because when my sign goes up, things happening, things are changing, and the market knows it. And when you get that kind of confidence, you'll be the number one dominant listing agent in your marketplace. Love it. Love That's it. Okay. Off the mic. Fabulous. Fabulous. Well, let me just take one more quick glance here to make sure we don't have any other questions before we go. Actually, this is a this is an interesting one. Um, so where do you think the future of listing presentations is going to be? Do you think it's in video? Do you think it's in a standard PowerPoint? Do you think, you know, where do you see those trends going that's going to attract a seller the most within that listing presentation? Hmm. I, I think it's, it's going to be in the pre-listing. I've already said you got to sell them on you before you get there. Because believe me, by the time you they've made the call, you make the initial contact, they've you know they've forgotten a lot of things. So pre-listing, if you've got a week, the longer you've got, the better. Just hope they don't list the house before you get there. So when you go in, I think you got to have a listing presentation that looks good. We do um, iPads, and one of the coolest things that we do on the iPads that I like a lot is we have the uh, iPads conferenced, and we can have as many as three iPads. So if you ever listed a house where the husband and wife weren't getting along, maybe they're getting ready to get a divorce, they're not sitting real close together. So you throw one iPad over here, let the husband have it, one iPad and let the buyer have it, and then you control your slides. And we also use a written presentation, a written listing package, and I'm going to bring them back and forth because believe me, before I start into a presentation, I'm going to have their attention. And the way you get the uh, audience's attention is, have you ever been to a rock concert? Did they put the main attraction up there, the first one out of the gate? No, they didn't do it. They put the smaller uh, band up there and they warmed the crowd up. And the way a real estate agent warms the crowd up is by doing that intent listing, listening, intent listening and asking correct question to get them into the mindset of, okay, now tell us what do we need to do? We've told you our heart, now tell us. And that's when you walk up stage and leave the house with the signed listing agreement. You drop that mic. <laughs> All right, Marty, one last question. I think this is a really strong one, just to leave them a little bit of taste of coming soon with them. So when you sit down with the seller, I'm sure you've been in circumstances that you're trying to pitch this pre-promotion coming soon strategy to them. 
and they say, well, I don't have the time to take two weeks, four weeks, whatever the time period might be to pre-promote my home. What, how would you kind of handle that objection when you sit down with the seller and they say, you know what, um, I, I need to sell now. I can't take a little bit of time to promote it as coming soon. Well, number one, you should know what you're walking into before you go into that listing appointment. So you need to know a little bit that the seller's got that mindset. And, you know, when you meet with a seller, a sale is going to be made. Either he's going to sell you on what he thinks, or you're going to sell him on what you know. And so you have to, you have to know the value of coming soon. And, and you're right. In some markets, some markets are, are faster. Right now we're working against, you know, our fall market is very, very fast, but we know it's going to slow down through the holidays and we know what months are going to be slow. And there's something out there that uh, is a wild card in that. And the wild card in that is interest rates because interest rates, a change in interest rates can make a dead market hot. And so you got to know the facts. But when I'm selling that seller, the, the shortest amount of time that I'm going to do a coming soon is probably about 10 days. I prefer to have two full weekends on coming soon. And I've already said with a higher priced property, it's longer. So to answer your question, honestly, I don't usually have that objection because coming soon is such a um, an easy philosophy for sellers to grasp. They get it. I mean, honestly, sometimes I think they get it more than the agents get it. Uh, maybe the agents have got uh, just like cutting hair. They just want to get on to the next deal, and they're not thinking about, you know, how can I really hit a home run with this thing? Let me tell you, a home run is a bunch of offers. And I've had as many as 17 offers on one property, selling that property, which was a very low price property, $40,000 over list price without an appraisal. When you've got lots of people to choose from, things get better for you mm -hmm. and Love it. Love it. Well, Marty, I think that's all we have for today. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up here. But if anybody is interested to see if we still have a spot left to join Marty's exclusive Coming Soon Homes program, please visit comingsoonmarketing.com for more details. That'll give you a little bit more detail about the program, how it works, whether it will fit into your current team or entire firm strategy. You can reach out to us to see if we still have a spot left in your city market. Otherwise, even if you just have questions, you wanna reach out to Marty or I and have a quick conversation about if coming soon or different avenues or ways that you could uh, get some more traction on your listings and increase your business. So feel free to call um, either Marty or myself at 919-232-9239. Again, 919-232-9239. Marty, anything else? I just want to say thank you. I, I'm so glad that y'all joined me here today. Y'all is Southern for you guys. <laughs> So thanks for joining us. I know what this industry can do for a humble person like me when I first got in this, this business. So I'd love to help you attain. But let me tell you something. This is no silver bullet. This is a strategy, a strategy for a serious professional to win. I don't want anybody to join us that's just looking for a quick fix. This is not a silver bullet. This is a definitive way to carve out a niche for yourself that, that can give your sellers the best of any market. Or I rest my case. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Well, definitely stay tuned to uh, get signed up for Marty's live pre-listing pitch. It's going to be a really exciting event, so we'll definitely keep you in tuned. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks, guys.